Hi guys, John from FlyAtMikeAlpha.com. Today we're gonna check out our Cessna 150, how to change the brake pads on it and rivet on some new uh, brake linings to the actual backing plates. And not only that, but also how to make the logbook endorsement when we're all said and done so the airplane's legal to go fly again. We'll get right to it. Kia Arbor Tower, right turn northbound approved, runway two four cleared for takeoff. So for starters here, we've got our brake caliper. That's this part that slides back and forth. It has slides on there, and you also have two brake pads on either side. So we'll look at both of these brake pads here. And we can see there's a big gap there. We've already pressed our piston back into place. And we can see the inner pad is pretty substantially worn there. Uh, the outer pad, not quite so much. Looks like those sliding pins that normally this caliper would slide on and float. They call it a floating caliper design. Looks like that kind of bound up on us. Maybe we ran out of grease. And so the inner pad where the piston pushes out was wearing substantially more than the uh, outer pad. So we're gonna go ahead and take both those off and uh, replace both of the linings. Our 7 16 inch wrench here. We're gonna go ahead and break free both of these bolts. Should come free pretty easily. And there's not only the uh, bolt, but also the washer that we'll have to hang on to. All right, so we've got our one uh, backing plate off here. We can see our two rivets. The uh, rivets kind of folded over on the back side there. We're gonna keep our backing plate and replace this liner that's partially worn. And then we can go ahead and pull out these two bolts here. Make sure you hang on to those washers. We'll just slide this guy right out. And that's what we have here. This is our brake assembly for pretty much any small general aviation aircraft, actually. Um, this is the same on a 172, a Piper Cherokee, most of the Piper products, most of the Cessna products, um, Diamond, uh, really all of them use the same design. Two pins so it can slide back and forth, and then this piston comes out when you press on your brake pedal. This backing plate gets pressed out against the rotor as that gets pressed against the rotor, this is bolted to the other side so that it actually squeezes from both sides, but it's only gonna squeeze from both sides if these pins are well lubricated and it can slide and float back and forth properly. If they're not well lubricated, as it begins to bite, it's gonna kind of uh, bend down or get stuck in place there and get pushed and locked in kind of crooked there. And most of the force will come from the inside, not from both sides, so you'll get uneven wear like we have here. We've got a pretty thick pad on the outside, pretty thin on the inside. It's all the way down to the rivets just about, so it's definitely time to get replaced. So normally our piston would be pushed out quite a bit here. We've already pushed that back in uh, with our C-clamp. So we would simply take a tool, like this guy right here, take our C-clamp, open it up, put that on both sides there, and then go ahead and screw it in to push our piston back into place. As we're doing that, we could also go ahead and open up this bleeder valve here with a little wrench. And it's just about a, uh, I believe that's a um, 3 16 wrench on this bleeder to open. As you push that piston back in, you could just push it back in and the hydraulic fluid or the 5606 would go back through the line and come out uh, usually the top of the overflow at the reservoir at the pedals. Um, however, any dirt and grease and grime that has gotten past your O-ring there would also be pushed back into your brake line system, and you really don't want to do that. So you could just break free this little piss, uh, this little um, uh, bleeder valve here and let all the brake fluid just kind of leak out um, into the little receptacle there, squeeze it all out. You should be able to push this piston back in just with two thumbs. You don't even need the C-clamp, really. Close that bleeder valve so you don't get any air in the system, and then go ahead and make sure you top off your brake reservoir at the uh, master cylinder itself, and we'll show you how to do that right here. So that's our master cylinders, uh, one on each pedal, behind each rudder pedal there, and that is what we're actually going to fill through that little screw there on the top. Um, that's what we're going to fill um, our 5606 through. So we'll go ahead and top that off before we um, go ahead and press down the pedals and send more junk down through the brake line. We always wanna make sure that master cylinder's topped off with 5606 so you don't introduce any air into your brake lines. 
So definitely a good thing to check and make sure it's always topped off. So to remove our linings from our backing plates, we were gonna use this handy dandy tool here. And we got this tool from Aircraft Spruce. The uh, part number is in the description below. So we're gonna go ahead and take our other backing plate, repeat the same steps again. We're simply going to line up the flat side down on the tool and then put our little pin here and line that up on the center of the rivet. Wanna be very careful, it's directly in the center. So we'll get it most of the way here and then take some time to go ahead and realign it, make sure we're dead on right in the center. So we're right in the center there. It's hard to turn at first, a couple turns and then all of a sudden it's gonna get easier. And there we go, nice and easy all the way through. Go ahead and undo it now. And there we are, our rivet's been pushed through the bottom of that tool. It's out of there. Our backing plate is loose from our lining and we can go ahead and do our other one. All right, backing plate's free. Of all rivets, we could wire wheel it if we wanted to, then you definitely have to corrosion exit. We're not actually gonna wire wheel, we're just gonna wipe it down real good and put some uh, corrosion X or LPS3, some sort of corrosion protectant on there. If you use corrosion X and uh, some sort of corrosion preventative, these uh, backing plates should last you um, the life of the aircraft, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 hours, whatever it might be. Um, they're not going to go bad. It's just the linings that get replaced every couple hundred hours. Um, if it's with students, it might be every 50 or 100 hours even if they're riding the brakes a lot. A private owner can usually go uh, several hundred hours on a brake pad uh, change. Now, it's not a bad idea to change the pads well before they're worn. And my main reason for saying that is as the pads wear out, that empty space is gonna be taken up by this piston. And this piston is then going to be outside the um, caliper and exposed to the elements. It's going to get a lot of dirt and a lot of corrosion and by the time you do change the pads, 300 hours later and six years later in some cases for some owners that only fly 50 hours a year or even less, there might be so much corrosion on this piston it would have to be replaced because it would not um, go back into the um, caliper. They call this a cylinder rather um, than a caliper but I call it a uh, caliper much like on a car. But this piston may have so much corrosion on the exterior of it that you wouldn't be able to push it back in and oftentimes it Maybe so bad that you can't just clean it up with a little bit of fine sandpaper or the a &P can't clean it up. So you have to buy a whole new assembly. And um, that's just not uh, you know, really worth um, delaying a brake pad change. These brake pads themselves are about $7 each for each lining. So 14 bucks to do a wheel. So $14 is a lot better than a uh, 300 some dollar assembly. So we'll go ahead and we'll take our brake linings here. We'll go ahead and drop our rivets into place. Typically rivets come with the linings. If not, these rivets are just about 15 cents each. You can buy a big pack of them fairly inexpensively. So we've got our rivets put into place there. You can see them sticking down the bottom of the lining. We'll go ahead, we'll do our uh, backing plate for the inner side first. You can tell uh, which side gets the backing plate on it by those uh, dimples there and also just the marks left uh, from the years of use. So we've got our two inserts in place. We'll go ahead and get our backing plate uh, lined up in there. And it kind of helps, it sort of self-centers, but we want to make sure we're dead center on this when we put it all together. And again, um, it makes a huge difference if you have a vice handy um, to do this in, so you're not doing it freehand like we are right now. It makes it a lot harder to hold this thing. We'll go ahead and brace against the tire to make it easier on ourselves. And we're simply just turning until that rivet mushrooms and uh, we get a nice firm grip between it and the, um, between the lining and the backing plate. Go ahead and undo that here. Take a look at our handiwork and see how that looks. And that looks like a pretty good uh, fold over of the rivet. It's firmly attached, it's not gonna go anywhere. We'll go ahead and do our other one and just repeat that step three more times and this wheel will be uh, re-riveted. Get our other guy in there. And it's important to talk about as we're doing this, 
um, that if those holes don't line up exactly perfectly, you know, that they're maybe just a few millimeters off and you can't get the rivets through the other side, like we see here where they both come through nice and easy, everything lines up great, don't get a drill or a file and start making adjustments to make the stuff line up. These linings are only a couple bucks. Go buy the right ones. You just ordered the wrong ones. Um, there's slight differences between Rapco and uh, some of those Cleveland brake uh, assemblies. So, you know, if you're not sure, just order one pad of Cleveland, one pad from Rapco, take the brake assembly apart, let the aircraft beat down for a few days, um, take it apart, test fit it, find out which one works, and then go ahead and order um, the three others from the proper company that works for your aircraft. All right, we've got two more nicely done rivets there. So we've got both of our uh, backing plates with the linings riveted on, everything looks good. Brand new thick brake linings. We'll go ahead and before we slide this on here, we're gonna put some C5A Loctite anti-seize on there. It's a copper-based anti-seize lubricant, high temperature um, anti-seize lubricant. We'll go ahead and stir it up, make sure we get it all mixed up well here. Use just a little bit, but this is what's going to help this floating caliper continue to float and not seize up like it did previously, like when we took it apart and you saw how we had uh, those, um, the wear, the extra wear on the inner pad, not much wear on the outer pad. We want this thing to really be able to float and slide back and forth freely. That'll wear both pads equally. It'll give you a longer time uh, between brake pad changes. And um, overall, it's just better. It protects it from corrosion. We can even paint a little bit of this stuff inside our um, little slide tubes there. So now we can go ahead and slide on our first backing plate. And we'll go ahead and slide this guy into our holes there. We'll take this, just like we took it off of there, line it up and slide our bolts through. It's a lot easier once you get one of them started. Just start it with your fingers there. Make sure you're not cross-threading it. You don't wanna to have to buy new parts if you don't need them. These things should last you quite some time if you take care of them and just take your time. So got them finger started there. Go ahead and snug them up. All right, we'll go ahead and get a torque wrench out. Torque those two bolts to spec. Uh, we've got a nice floating caliper there with some free play. Uh, it's not too tight. Our wheel still moves freely. Everything's good. We're gonna go ahead and uh, opt checks the brakes. We're gonna fire up, taxi around a bit, and we need to break the um, brakes in or kind of burn them in, they say. We'll do a few high-speed taxi runs down the runway and kind of jam on the brakes to burn them in so they really take the shape of the um, rotor. The rotor, of course, is a little bit older. It's worn, it's not perfectly flat. And so we need to burn in those new pads to the shape of the rotor so you have maximum surface contact area and you get good firm braking when you do step on your brakes. Um, we've already topped off our brake reservoir. So uh, we should be go to, good to go to go ahead and uh, test these. And uh, that's what we'll go ahead and do next. So now we're on to making our logbook entry. And now, well, there's nothing that clearly spells out in part 43 that an owner operator can replace their own brake linings. It's not really something that I would want to go and sign off myself in the logbook. So therefore, this is something that you should do as an owner operator under the supervision of an A&P or IA during your annual or something like that and have them sign it off. And the logbook entry will look something like this. You're always going to have the date, the recording tack time, the total time in service, and then, of course, the actual meat of the entry, what did you do? And this entry is pretty good here. It's very short and sweet to the point. Replace the brake linings, left and right wheels, according to the Cessna maintenance manual, ops checked okay, signed Joe Smith, a &P, blah, blah, blah. The only other thing I would consider adding in here is the part number you actually replaced the, um, the brake linings with so that when you go to order those brake linings again, you have the actual part number in your maintenance logs and you don't have to wonder what did you actually order and what fit those backing plates. So get the part numbers in there of the stuff that you replace, have an entry that looks something like this, do the, super, do the work under the supervision of an A&P and you'll be all set. 
Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below and we'll make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Remember, fly every day, and if you can't, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. See y'all next time. Detroit, 118.95 today. Detroit on 1895, great, Yankee, have a good one.